In this screencast, we're going to look at something called the component test, or how do you know if a vector field is conservative or if the vector field has a potential. These are actually synonyms in some sense, that vector fields are conservative when they have a potential. The next screencast is going to spend a lot of time on the word conservative. For now, we need to know, when do you know if you can find a potential? The idea in the last screencast, we took something like f is x squared plus 4xy plus 3y squared. We took the derivative of the function and we got 2x plus 4y, and then we got a 4x plus 6y. If you take the second derivative of this function, notice it's a vector field, so there's two inputs, two outputs. We take a derivative of each part with respect to x and put it in a column, so that gives us a 2 and a 4. Then we take the derivative with respect to y, which gives us a 4 and a 6. Now something I'd like to point out, this number right here is f sub yx, and this number is f sub xy. And those always should be the same. We're going to be using that fact to determine when something has a potential. So let's take a vector field such as the vector field negative y x. Does this vector field have a potential? Well, if we just try and go about finding it and we integrate y with negative y with respect to x, we get negative xy. And if we integrate x with respect to y, so we try to integrate with respect to x, try to integrate with respect to y, we get xy. Well, we have a negative xy over here, but we have a positive xy over here. Those disagree, which means there's a problem. Does that mean there is no potential? Well, not necessarily. It just means that our method of finding the potential has come to a problem. We can show, however, there is no potential. Suppose a potential existed. Then what that means is our f sub x would have to be negative y, and our f sub y would have to be positive x. Well, if I just take the derivative of this vector field, if I take the derivative with respect to x, I get a 0 and then a 1. And if I take the derivative with respect to y, I get a negative 1 and then a 0. <gasps> Wait a minute. These are not the same. The fact that they're not the same means there is no potential. And it's not possible to find one. One way you can look at it is this matrix has to be symmetric. You've got to be able to transpose it. The numbers in the lower left always need to match the numbers in the upper right. The diagonals don't matter, so whether I compute them or not is actually irrelevant. But the key is that the numbers off the diagonals in the lower left have to mirror image the numbers in the upper right. Let's look at a bigger example. I'm just going to look at a function. We'll go x plus 2y plus 3z. 2x plus 3y plus 4z, and 3x plus 4y plus 5z. We're going to take the derivative of f, and we need to take a derivative with respect to x, which means we get a 1, a 2, and a 3. Now I need derivatives with respect to y, which will get me a 2, a 3, and a 4. Now I need a derivative with respect to z, which will get me a 3, a 4, and a 5. And the key is those two numbers are the same, those two numbers are the same, and those two numbers are the same. It doesn't matter what the numbers in the middle are, but this matrix is symmetric, so there is a potential. We could find the potential by integrating, but we're going to skip and just look at another example. Suppose I have a vector field, and let's just write down another one. Let's go x plus 2y, and 3x plus 4y. The derivative of this vector field is, well, derivative with respect to x are 1 and 3, and derivative with respect to y are 2. Halt. We actually already know. Problem. They're not the same. I could have put a 4 here. But there is no potential. In the book, you're going to find they write f is mn, which means if I want to take the derivative of f, it's take the derivative of m with respect to x, take the derivative of n with respect to x. And then I take derivatives with respect to y and with respect to y. And so the question is, does my equal nx? If it does, there's a potential. 
Over here, when we're in three dimensions, our function is m, n, and you'll see a p. So if I calculate the derivative, we'd get an mx, nx, px, my, ny, py, mz, nz, pz. And I need to know, are those the same? So does nx equal my? Are those two the same? Does mz equal px? And are those two the same? Does py equal mz? You've got to check all three. If all three are the same, there is a potential. If not, there isn't. That completes the screencast. And just one comment. You can memorize it this way, or if you'd prefer, just remember, take the derivative as a matrix and ask, is it symmetric? And I think that's actually the simplest way to do this. Just take derivatives and ask, are they, do they match up? And that completes